Shri Tripura Rahasyam Mahatmya Khandam Aum Shri Ganesha Sharada Guru Bhyo Namaha Namaste So last time we recounted how Sumedha approached Parashuram for initiation into the Sri Vidya. And he had approached him once before, 17 years before that. <clears throat> but he declined to initiate him because at that time Sumedha wasn't qualified. But this time, after doing so much puja, sadhana, meditation, and service uh, to his guru, now Sumedha was ready. So <clears throat> the next uh, verse, I'm, I'm really compressing this story. <laughs> There's a lot more going on in between. But uh, in the next part, Sumedha begins the practice. Having initiated Sumedha, Parashuram addressed him, My child, practice that supreme truth. Thus receiving the entire secret, he made a clean cottage and there started the Sri Vidya practice. He spent one year and five months, as if in a moment, and mastered the practice. So this is what happens. Once you get the initiation, initiation just means starting. Huh? Initiations are always uh, about a specific practice. And here this is about the Sri Vidya practice. And the Sri Vidya uh, practices are very secret because they're tantric practices. So uh, it's not like in conventional religion where there's all kinds of restrictive rules and regulations. It's very spontaneous and beautiful. Huh? But it's also has to be confidential because the uh, feminine path, the path of the goddess, accepts all of the human nature and doesn't try to repress any part of it. So sexuality is also part of it. Uh, everything, the whole range of human activities are part of the Sri Vidya practice. And also there are secret mantras, there are various other secret practices that are only revealed to initiates. And you have to be qualified. You know, I keep coming back to this again and again. Because people think nowadays that they can just read a book and then do some esoteric practice and get the result. But it doesn't happen that way. Huh? If you've been around the block, if you've been doing any of these practices, for even a short amount of time. You know this is true. This is your experience, right? But because of a fixed idea that I'm independent, I don't need a guru, I can go off and practice on my own, I can just read the book or go to the website, get the information, and then I'll get it. No, you won't get it. Sorry, <laughs> you need the initiation. Ramana Maharshi told a nice story about this. And I've, telled, I've told this story two or three times before, but it bears repeating. That a king came to visit his minister, but the minister was chanting Gayatri Mantra. And so that is the most sacred mantra, at least uh, to the people on the male path. <laughs> anyway, he couldn't be interrupted, so the king had to wait. When the minister came out from his meditation room, the king asked him, you know, I'd like to learn Gayatri too. Can you initiate me? And the minister said, no, I, I can't do that. The king said, why not? You know the mantra. I know the mantra myself. I just need the initiation ceremony. Uh, and the minister said, no, it, it doesn't work like that. The king said, what are you talking about? And the minister said, I'll give you an example. And since they were in the royal palace, there was a guard standing at the door. 
So the minister said to the guard, arrest the king. The guard just stood there like, what? What are you talking about? And the minister said again, arrest the king. The guard just, just stood there. Now the king's getting pissed off. And he says to the guard, arrest the minister. Immediately the guard jumps and arrests the minister. So the minister laughs and he said, see, it's that way with politics and orders. And it's also the same way with mantras. Your order was effective because you have the authority. Similarly, one has to have the authority to give the mantra, to vest the mantra. And what is that authority? Realization. One has to have realized the mantra. Then one can give it to others and it'll be effective. So this is the thing. If you just read a mantra in a book and, and sit down and chant it, nothing will happen. But if you are qualified to receive that mantra and you go to someone who's qualified to give it, oh, then the mantra is very potent. So this is what's going on here. He says, practice that supreme truth. So this Sri Vidya is the supreme truth. It's not just a half truth, uh -huh. like the male paths. The male path is only half the truth. But the Sri Vidya is the whole truth because it includes both, the masculine and the feminine. So in this way, the Sri Vidya practices give tremendous results, uh, almost immediate results if you're doing them right. So he received the entire secret. That means all the secret mantras, all the secret practices and so on. So he made a, a cottage, nice and clean, huh? probably in a very quiet place where there won't be any interruptions. And he started the practice. And in one year and five months, huh? which passed just like that, he uh, mastered the practice. What does that mean? Well, we'll see in the next verse what that means. <laughs> but uh, something similar to that happened to me. Uh, I know this goddess Tripura. Uh, I met her. She appeared to me, not appeared, you know, visually, but in her subtle form as Kundalini. Kundalini is her most subtle form, pure energy. So she was certainly very present, <laughs> but not in a visible form. And uh, this was in 1984. I spent six weeks just sitting. Practically, I didn't sleep, only ate little, uh, only sitting and doing self-inquiry. And after that, after six weeks, the goddess appeared, manifested. Oh boy, what bliss, wow. So this is the uh, experience known as stream entry by the Buddhists. If you get this experience, it means you're on the home stretch. You're very close to enlightenment. It's actually a glimpse of nirvana. And wow, nirvana is fabulous. Uh, so then you have to do the rest of the practice, finish up all your karma, and then you get that result permanently. That's enlightenment. You see, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. It's not like you just go down to the local yoga center and pretend to meditate. <laughs> And chant, um. <laughs> no, you have to chant properly. Pronounce the mantras properly with the proper intonation and meter. Huh? And all this is given by initiation, by a qualified guru. Then you get the result of the practices. Huh? If you perform them nicely, not before. And what is that result? 
Then Sri Parameshwari appeared to him in a dream, assuming the sportive form of a beautiful ten-year-old girl, with shining limbs red like the rising sun, bearing japa mala, book, and mudras of protection and boon in her four hands, with three eyes and a crown shining with crescent moon. See, this is the goddess. She will appear in one of her forms. You know, you never know. It's up to her. <laughs> for, for me, she appeared in the form of Kundalini. And for Sumedha, she appeared as a 10-year-old girl with four arms huh? and different things. A book, a japa mala means these beads. Where are they? These beads, which are used for chanting mantras and keeping account. Uh -huh. And then in her other hand was a book, uh, probably the Devi Mahatmya, which we're studying right now. And in her other hands, her other two hands, were mudras of protection and boon. Okay, you can't see. The hand should go down, downwards. Fingers facing downwards. So these mudras are shown by the demigods or gods when they give various blessings, either protection or boons. But often, most of the time, actually, in the case of uh, Sri, the goddess, she's holding various items in her hands and she gives blessings with her feet alone. Uh, she's so potent. She doesn't even have to do anything. <laughs> Just by showing up, that's enough. Let me tell you, the ecstasy is really profound. So this is the authentic sadhana. Huh? Not that you just sit there and grind away at some boring meditation. <laughs> no, no, no. There was a cartoon. Uh, a monk is sitting there looking all irritated and the caption is uh, did the timekeeper die or what <laughs> in buddhist monasteries they'll sit for a certain period of time and uh, <laughs> did the timekeeper die you know what's his problem man come on isn't it time if you feel like that about your meditation practice i can assure you you're doing something very wrong <laughs> Meditation should be beautiful. It should be interesting. In fact, it should be fascinating. So much so that you don't want to do anything else. Huh? Since getting initiation into the Sri Vidya path, I've been chanting the Siddha Mantra. The Siddha Mantra is so wonderful. I can't, I mean, I can't tell you about it because it's secret. <laughs> And interestingly, the reason why it's secret is that it's different for everybody. It's calculated astrologically. So according to your nakshatra of your moon and so on, so many things, the mantra will differ according to the specific form of the goddess who you need to approach. So you see, this is a great science. It's deep. And it's connected with everything else. The Sri Yantra, which we'll be describing when we get to the part on uh, practices, is the key to the entire Vedic system. The language, the theology, the astrology, the cosmology, everything. But you see, people don't understand. They, they take these things as separate and they don't see the integrated whole. It takes a long time. It takes deep learning to get to the point where you can see that. Just like one of our students, well, so-called students, <laughs> on the private channel, uh, only one or two of them are doing really anything. Uh, but this one guy wrote me, he said, I'm trying to practice the Gayatri Mantra as given in your series, my online series of Gayatri Mantra. But I don't, I don't know if I really believe in it. 
But wait a minute. <laughs> the, the first line after Om huh, of the Gayatri Mantra is Bhur, Bhuva, Swaha. The three worlds, the earthly world, the celestial world, and the heavenly world. And we experience these three worlds every single day of our lives. Huh? When we're in waking consciousness, we experience the earthly world. When we're in dream consciousness, swapna, we experience the celestial world. And when we're in deep sleep, shushupta, we experience the heavenly world. So what's the problem? That what's to believe in? Huh? It's a fact. It's our everyday experience. As soon as we change our level of consciousness, the one world disappears and another one shows up. <laughs> and the whole point of the Gayatri Mantra is to achieve the Turiya, the state which is the substrate of all three of the others. And there's a secret fourth pada of the Gayatri Mantra, which is usually only given to sannyasis and which describes the, which is the key to actually, the, uh, the fourth state. So one should become devoid of material desires, become a sannyasi, get initiated into the secret padas of the Gayatri Mantra and realize the Turiya state. That's the whole point of Gayatri Mantra. <laughs> But people take it so shallowly, huh? like it's something you have to believe in. No, 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 no. It's something you practice and experience. The mantra will change your consciousness if you're doing it right, if you're properly initiated and you're practicing it right. So, you see, all these things depend on the relationship with the guru. And if you don't have a guru, you don't have access to these things. And you can't really get the result of these powerful practices that can change your consciousness and eliminate all suffering. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum.